Super Bowl conspiracies that I, you know, I'm not very familiar with and I haven't heard of. Um, we've got the whole Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey. He's Mr. Pfizer. He's got Mrs. Swift. The machine wants him to win. You know, everybody's saying that. Even though the, the Chiefs have won twice in the last four years, I think it is, including last year. But, of course, conspiracies are fun. And uh, the NFL logo conspiracy didn't pan out this year. That theory where the colors they use in the uh, logo for the Super Bowl denotes which teams are going to be in it. Didn't work out this year. It would have been the Baltimore Ravens. Instead, it's the Chiefs again and the 49ers. Here's a couple conspiracies from the NFL that I haven't heard of before. That they were hiding Tom Brady's concussions. And this is from a 24-7 Sports. Uh, we didn't expect in the first day of 2017, during a CBS morning show interview that occurred on May 17th, 2017, Tom Brady's then-wife, Giselle Bunshin, claimed Brady has a history of concussions and also that Brady suffered a concussion during the 2016 season. The Patriots never posted any concussions for Brady on official injury lists during the campaign, which has raised eyes among observers and those who feel the Patriots have violated the NFL rules over the years. In fact, it's never been listed um, that Brady has had a concussion throughout his pro career. Have they covered it up? Blah, blah, blah. You decide. Now, this is true. I've never heard of Brady having a concussion. I've never heard of it. He had, I think it was his broken shin or something. He was out for an entire season once because of a tackle on the lower part of his shin. And I don't know if that was his foot, his shin bone, or his ankle, whatever it was, but he was out for a year. But for his wife to say back then that he has a history of concussions and that he suffered a concussion last year, you know, that never came out. If that's true, it completely never came out. And I think that's that's pretty weird. Um, he doesn't exactly act like a guy with concussions. You can kind of tell when some people have had a lot of concussions. But then again, Brett Favre said he's had hundreds of concussions. We go down to the Baltimore Ravens against Colin Kaepernick, where the, the lights went out during the Super Bowl. Now, if you haven't heard this, the, the game was close, and then the lights went out, and it took them something like half an hour to get the lights back on. The Ravens jumped out to a 28-6 lead over the 49ers in the third quarter, probably leading some viewers to seek out other programming before the lights of the Super Bowl went out. The power outage interrupted play for over half an hour, and it gave the Niners an opportunity to regroup. The San Francisco, San Francisco embarked on a rally that had come up just short, but the Ravens winning 34-31 couldn't quiet some conspiracy theories that claimed the plug had been pulled in an effort to keep fans tuned in and to stall Baltimore's momentum. Baltimore linebacker Ray Lewis even stated that he thought it was a bit strange that a zillion dollar company would experience such a technical failure on that organization's biggest night of the year. He's not wrong. Now, what I heard, what I read about this conspiracy is that the lights were accidentally turned off or something like the they had an overload of the system and the lights go out. And the reason why it takes so long to get these lights back on because it's not like flipping on a light switch. When these lights go out, they don't just turn on, right? They take a while to charge up and get as bright as they are. So I don't know if it's the fact that you can't just flip them on or they'll burn out, or if when you turn them on, it actually takes 30 minutes to get all these gigantic lights going again or to the power going again, and they probably had to do some checks to make sure that the, the lights don't just burn out again. I don't know. But I remember reading about something like that at the time and the fact that they wanted Ray Lewis to win but they didn't want it to him to be so obviously the winner. You see what I'm saying? Like Ray Lewis had something like, I think it was 12 years or something between Super Bowls. This was his last year. And they miraculously made this run and won the Super Bowl. But they didn't want it to seem obvious. This is a conspiracy anyways. They didn't want it to seem obvious. So they pulled the plug. Now you might be thinking Colin Kaepernick, right? They wanted him to win or lose because of the kneeling. But this was pre-kneeling. See, Kaepernick was good for a couple of years. He made the Super Bowl. He was an athletic quarterback. But this is the closest he got, obviously. Never won the Super Bowl. And then after that, he shit the bed. Like, he, he wasn't just this perennially good quarterback that they blackballed. That's what the story, they try to make the story be, right? Is that he was so good, and he never got this other chance. Colin Kaepernick actually started sucking, got benched, and then that's when he kneeled. He needed the publicity. He never actually fully explained what he, his remarks were other than 
this is like a, a country where people are oppressed by the police and the government and whatnot. He never expanded on anything. It was never forced to. Con- subsequently wore pig socks with cops, like cops as pigs. Wore communist t-shirts. Got different tryouts. Mocked them. Didn't show up. Changed the location. That sort of stuff. Colin Kaepernick sucks. There's no, there's not much more we can say about it. Colin Kaepernick is definitive in his sucking prowess. The last one I want to point out is a good one. Russell Wilson Super Bowl interception. And this conspiracy goes... It's a, it's a couple fold, I should say. So we'll read it here for you. It's years after the fact and still makes zero sense the Seattle Seahawks elected to pass the ball from the one-yard line late in Super Bowl Forty Nine against the Patriots. The Patriots secured a victory after quarterback Russell Mil- Wilson threw an interception in the end zone and multiple conspiracy theories were born. One involves Marshawn Lynch. You guys know Beast Mode in a lot of commercials or running back. Basically, their star player. Could have been... a an MVP had he scored the game-winning TD. Lynch had a history for giving non-answers during interviews, particularly during the team's media day leading up to Super Bowl 49. And the theory is that the NFL wanted Wilson to throw a TD so it would be more of a media darling in the eyes of some, and Lynch would not be the MVP. Now, this is pretty much what Marshawn Lynch has said. He said that he heard that due to his uh, not wanting to do press and him saying, what did he say, um... I'm only here so I don't get fined. That was I'm glad I remembered that. But that was what he said. He showed up um, to interviews and post game press conferences, and he would say, "I'm just here so I don't get fined." Because he didn't like talking to the media. I mean, he did uh, eventually did a bunch of TV shows and commercials, so who knows? But he he kept saying, "I'm just here so I won't get fined." Now he said, "I think I, I'm this is a this is a summation of what I." I Recall him saying, right? Don't sue me, anybody. But he he thought that, you know, such and such, Pete Carroll being the coach, got a call down or maybe the offensive coordinator from ownership that said, if it comes down to the wire, don't put the ball in his hands unless we absolutely have to. So I think that was on second down. I'm not sure. It might have been first down and goal because they made this crazy catch at like the five-yard line where Buddy's on his back. And the ball gets tipped and he catches it while he's on his back. And everybody's like, oh my God, the Patriots are screwed now. After Tom Brady just went and got an amazing touchdown, amazing drive. And now the the Seahawks come back immediately the other way, get this amazing catch. And now I think they're on the, the three-yard line or something. I don't know if it was first or second down, excuse me, for not knowing. But they didn't run the ball. That's why I think it was first down, because they didn't run the ball. And... What do they do? They immediately go for a pass, which was insane. Like, I'm not saying this isn't the right thing they should have done, but it was insane that they didn't give the ball to Marshawn Lynch. They pass the ball, interception, guy named Malcolm Butler, takes it out of the end zone, end zone to the three, it's down, it's over, right? What people don't really know is that if you watch some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, like the road to the Super Bowl, I forget what it's called, they follow all the teams, but the, the one that they put out for the Super Bowl championship team every year for the Patriots is the week before the Super Bowl, the Patriots are practicing that exact play. You know, obviously Belichick and Brady geniuses in the playbook sense, right? Belichick had his defense and specifically that guy practicing that defense of that play for the week leading up to that. They had seen the Seahawks run this play before to try to get a touchdown and close yardage of the end zone. And, you know, that leads more credence to, to the fact that that was not a slight on Marshawn Lynch, but rather something that they had planned to go to all along because the Patriots knew about that play. They knew that they had run this play to try to score a touchdown in close proximity to, proximity to the end zone before. So they had Malcolm Butler practice this play where he undercuts the receiver and goes in between the receiver and... And the quarterback to undercut it for the interception. That's exactly how it played out. He undercut the pass. He was there. They passed it pretty much blindly because this is what they've been doing on this play. Buller catches it. Game over. Seahawks lose. Those are some of the best conspiracies, I think. Now, there's other conspiracies out there, particularly with Marshawn Lynch. I remember seeing a image of purporting that Marshawn Lynch was putting his thumbs up that he wanted to be tackled or don't tackle me, something like that, which was literally just the way he was gripping the ball at the time, if you see the whole replay. 
There's other stuff that floats around on some of these conspiracy pages. And it's really bad because none of these pages really know about sports. And they tend to lend themselves to a self-owning and discrediting. Because some of these pages that I watch that have the NFL uh, fix conspiracies, they've actually taken footage of guys talking about, you know, rigging it jokingly and use that as evidence of them saying that they've rigged the game. You know, I'm pretty sure it happened in the NBA as well, where they said there was the script, but they definitely in the NFL, they said there was a script they were supposed to follow. And some of these players, they go on shows and they go on podcasts and they say, yeah, that wasn't part of the script. And they all laugh about it. Because there's these claims out there. And then some of these pages go out and they use the footage of them saying this was a script and referring to a script as evidence that there is indeed a script. Maybe there is. They've outed gambling and fixing and rigging by referees in different sports, especially basketball. But maybe there's something to it. I don't know. I didn't want to come on here and talk about the Taylor Swift conspiracy. It's too obvious. Maybe it's true. Pfizer. Taylor Swift, Democratic fan, let's say. And, um, you know, too easy, I guess. So I wanted to bring out some other ones. Turn it up, Jordan.